So today I was going to do a video about cherry blossoms in Tokyo, but you can see how that turned out. It's raining. But you know what? There's no better topic for a day like today than Japanese poetry. And my favorite poet is Takaboku Ishikawa. Now, how did he get famous? What did he get famous for? What did he do in his very short life? And why is there a celestial body named after him? Let's find out. Let's go inside. It's too cold out here. So Takabuki Ishikawa was born February 20th, 1886 in Iwate Prefecture. He dropped out of high school at 16 to become a poet. He was the master of the Japanese poetry form called Tanka, and he's known for three major works. Yearning, published in 1905 when he was just 19. A Handful of Sand, published in 1910. But he died in Hakodate Hokkaido on April 13th, 1912 of tuberculosis. Sad Toys, a collection of his final work, was published posthumously in 1912. He also kept a diary written in Roman script, or Romaji, and he did that so his wife couldn't read it. He moved around during his life from Iwate to Tokyo and finally settling in Hokkaido. It's said that when he first arrived in Hakodate Hokkaido, that he looked around and said, I'd like to die here. His poetry reveals intense internal and external struggle. My favorite poem by Ishikawa is a very melancholy poem about crying on the beach. Let's read. Tōkai no Kojima no iso no now the translation. In the eastern sea, on a small island, on the rocky shore, on the white sand, I, my face streaked with tears, am playing with a crab. One of the devices that Ishikawa used so masterfully is going from a very large object to a very small object progressively. Notice that he starts with an island, the rocky shore, the white sanded beach, and then playing with a crab goes from a very large object down to a very small object. Another device that he uses is the concept of water throughout the whole thing, from the, the sea or the ocean, to the shore, to the beach, and then to his tears. One of those things in and of itself is not that big of a deal, but when you realize he had to use the correct number of syllables and these different devices, you know, the ability to put so many things together, the vowels, the syllables, the meaning, zooming in, and all the emotion, is what makes him a master of tanka. So what is so haunting about this is he doesn't really tell us exactly the source of this grief. Was it romance? Finance? There's a lot of speculation around his life. Maybe he's leaving it up to the reader to possibly pull something from their own life. Maybe life hasn't gone exactly as expected. I think this is something that most of us can identify with. It could be a broken relationship. It could be loss of a job. It could be not getting enough likes on the video. Okay, I made that part up. And notice that the subject of the poem is so grief-stricken that the only thing that he can do at that moment is sit on the beach and cry and play with this little crab. But if you've ever been through a stressful time, you know that we tend to get hyper-focused. So it makes sense that on this island, on this shore, on this sandy beach, the only thing he can see at that moment, he's hyper-focused on a crab. Notice that the creature he refers to as a crab. Crabs have scissors, right? And if he plays with this too long, he might get bit, he might get hurt. So sometimes when we're hyper-focused on something, maybe out of grief, uh, we could get involved in the wrong thing. That could cause even more pain. Now let's try a little simple linguistic analysis. Look at the first two lines and all the uses of the O vowel. Now look at the last three lines and see the vowel A ah is used several times. I'm gonna leave this up to the professional linguist to do some more analysis on that. But there are some books that you can get. One is a collection of his poems, and I put a link downstairs. I've also put two books about him that were written by very accomplished translators and authors. And if you're so inclined, you can get a copy of the original poems in Japanese. Believe it or not, this poem of 31 syllables has been the subject of college courses, books, and now even videos. So who's your favorite Japanese poet? Tell me in the comments below. So now we come full circle. In 1988, asteroid 4672 Takaboku was named in his honor. And we've come full circle. We've gone from tiny bits of sand up to an asteroid in the heavens. And that's it for the video.